I'm sorry. I'm going to have to break out the button for this one. Okay, I really wasn't intending on doing this video today. I was probably going to do a video about an OBS plugin or something like that. But I've opened up YouTube, I've got a notification, and it's a Harris Heller video. And most of the video is really, really good. And there's one portion of it that really got me triggered. There's a bit within it where he talks about whether or not you should sign the affiliate agreement. And actually, funnily enough, the way Harris interprets the landscape is actually pretty good. Some of the things that he says are factually wrong. And also, I don't agree with Devin Nash's sentiment that you should not sign the Twitch affiliate agreement. I think he may be fundamentally misinterpreting the agreement. So hi, I'm Machine Day and I hope you're doing really, really well. I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to go through exactly what it was that Harris Heller has said that is factually inaccurate about the Twitch affiliate agreement. I'm also going to just reference some of the things that Devin Nash has said, give my take on it, and also just talk a little bit about my own contract and commercial credentials, as well as ultimately whether or not you should or should not sign the Twitch affiliate agreement. I know that there are a lot of affiliates or soon to be affiliates that watch my channel. So I think that this content is relevant to my channel, but it's not the normal type of content I would do. I may do more of this content, but this is just something I've seen that I couldn't really not talk about because with my experience and also seeing the information I've seen in these videos, it just seems quite, it just has to be factually accurate. If you're putting content out to millions of people and you're potentially going to influence someone's commercial decisions and the direction they go with something, it's really important that you get at least the factual stuff right. If you do find this video useful, hit the like button, feel free to subscribe to the channel and you're welcome to come and hang out on my stream at twitch.tv forward slash machine dana so firstly i'm just going to talk a little bit about my own credentials um i'm 35 years old i've got 14 years of experience in business i've always worked business to business i've sat down you know hundreds of probably thousands of tables wait <laughs> I've probably sat down at, at tens of thousands of tables, but I've sat down at tables with CEOs, executives, directors, you name it. Uh, no one intimidates me from that point of view. I can sit in front of someone, I can have the negotiation. It's what I've done as a career for 14 years. Big portions of what I've done do relate to actually negotiating specific terms of contracts, adding terms, removing terms, tweaking terms. And some of the businesses I've negotiated with range from being half million, one million pound businesses, smaller businesses, through to multinational conglomerates, uh, turning over tens of billions. These are service contracts that I've negotiated to the value of, in some cases, tens of millions of pounds. I'm used to arguing over terms and conditions, and I know about terms and conditions and contracts. Why is this important? It's important because I know about certain terms. I've seen so many contracts that I know what's normal and what is not normal. Not only that, but I also know how to interpret those terms. And I've done this for a variety of different industries. And it's not just been one niche industry. Everything from adult products to food and digital products and all sorts, okay? So this also covers quite a lot of stuff like branding and things like that as well. So hopefully I come across as credible and I know that I am credible on this topic. I'm sure and I know that Devin Nash is very credible from that point of view as well. So I'm not putting into question Devin Nash's credibility here. I just think that his opinion is wrong and that on this particular thing, he's misinterpreting something. Harris Heller actually seems to be sort of standing back a little bit more from it. I think that's the wise thing to do. He's not trying to be an expert on contracts, but he is also clearly trying to help his viewers and I get that and that makes good sense. So I'm going to cover some fair use policy stuff here because I'm going to be briefly playing a clip from Harris Heller's most recent video where essentially I'm rebuttaling this and also talking over some of the facts and interpretations and, and of course this is all for educational purposes specifically for anyone that is a Twitch affiliate or considering becoming a Twitch affiliate and actually if you're a Twitch user whatsoever here it's relevant even if you're just chatting on Twitch. Okay, so I want to first precursor everything that I'm saying here by saying I am a huge, huge fan of Harris Heller. He has been very influential on the way I've managed my own channel, and he will, I'm sure, continue to be very, very influential. He's a great content creator. You should subscribe to his channel. You should also subscribe to Devin Nash's channel. The information they give about Twitch and about the content creation landscape for streamers is virtually unparalleled and, for the most part, is pretty awesome. It's just purely a rebuttal a factual rebuttal to something that's been said and also a sentiment that seems to be sort of creeping its way into the mindset of new streamers uh, and more established streamers, many of whom, in fact, most of whom are probably not commercially tuned in. They wouldn't have the business experience that perhaps someone like Devin Nash, Harris Heller or myself would have and would maybe take what is said as gospel. But there's a level of cynicism that seems to be within Devin Nash that's a little bit insidious. I know Devin Nash is very skeptical about Twitch 
uh, for a number of reasons, and he seems to have a lot more information than certainly anyone like I would have. There has to be credibility to that. There absolutely has to be credibility to that. But you also have to be open-minded about these things, particularly if you're a new content creator. So I'm just going to roll the clip from Harris Heller's most recent video. No Twitch streamer should get paid $5 an hour. The $5 an hour thing's irrelevant. That's just the way he's chosen to frame the video. But there's a bit buried in the middle of the video where he talks about whether or not you should or should not sign the affiliate agreement. And from what I pick up here, Harris Heller's basically disagreeing with Devin Nash and saying that you probably should sign the Twitch affiliate agreement if you want to and that it's not as scary. But there are some things in here that are not factually correct and you should be aware of these things. Just some context. The affiliate contract that you sign says some weird stuff in it. The two biggest things it talks about is that Twitch owns your likeness as a brand and that it reserves the right 100% to decide what sponsorships can go on your stream saying you're not allowed to put your own sponsors on your stream right only they can put ads on your stream i want to make it clear those are really weird things to be in twitch's affiliate contract like it is a bad contract and it reflects on twitch that they are going to make affiliates sign that so i'll put a full transcript of this and also some of the next parts that he talks about because he does go on to talk about essentially the real world application of this and i would definitely recommend viewing this video yourself and making up your own mind on this now here's here's also the bit in one of devin nash's videos where he talks about never becoming a twitch affiliate the title of the video is why you should never become a twitch affiliate and i'm going to explain to you in painstaking detail from the ground up and based on the foundations and looking at all the data and all of it on why you should absolutely never accept an affiliate contract with Twitch ever under any circumstances. So under any circumstances, we know how Devin Nash feels on the topic. Um, it's pretty clear that you should never sign the contract. Harris Hell is basically saying that you probably should sign the contract if you want to. Don't be scared off by these things. And I agree with Harris Heller on that. I do want to talk about something that Harris Heller says here because he says something specifically that is incorrect and you should be aware that this is incorrect. I will quote here just to avoid any misinterpretations. The affiliate contract that you signed says some weird stuff in it. First of all, I can tell you from reading hundreds, probably thousands of contracts, this is not a weird contract. This is an entirely normal, really, really normal contract. If anything, this is a really simple, straightforward, easy to understand, not disingenuous. It's a normal contract. What Twitch is doing here is pretty normal in the commercial world. So I don't know where this has come from, really. Anyone with any level of experience with contracts knows that this contract is pretty simple and straightforward. Don't get me wrong, it's worth the paper it is written on. They're not absolutely messing up the contract, but it's also not overly complicated either. He also says the two biggest things it talks about and i quote twitch owns your likeness as a brand and that it reserves the right to 100 percent decide what sponsorships can go on your stream so it doesn't take long to find this information if you're an affiliate you probably should have properly end to end read through the contract because you are signing that and it really does govern you this isn't like the terms and conditions of a website where you never read it or like the apple terms and conditions that get updated every two minutes you sign your life away and you accept that and you you take the risk or you just move to Android and sign the same type of agreement. This is an actual contract that you're signing that means that you will get revenue from Twitch potentially and it opens up those revenue channels for you. So the first precursor here, really important precursor is this is a commercial agreement. You are operating as a business, but the reality is you aren't signing this as some idiot on the street. You're signing this as a business, an entity, a trading entity, and you will then become accountable for your actions on the Twitch platform and of course your actions as a business entity. So I want to cover some things off about this within the Twitch affiliate agreement. First of all, this was last modified July 2019. This agreement hasn't really been changed in two years, okay? It's quite important that because I'll get to a later point on this, but they're not changing this affiliate agreement regularly. And by the way, if you want access to this, you can click on the affiliate link within your stream manager here, and it's literally right there. View the affiliate agreement, and it will pop open that same web page, but I will link it in the description as well. It's important to briefly mention this one here. Uh, by registering the program, you've agreed to the terms and conditions of this agreement, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. together with this agreement which is the twitch terms of service separately govern your use of the service so the terms of service govern how you use twitch and this twitch affiliate agreement essentially governs your commercial arrangement with twitch but the two kind of go hand in hand 
And for that reason, they say if there is any conflict between the two, this agreement, so the Twitch affiliate agreement, will take a precedent. In other words, it's more important for you as an affiliate. There's a lot of important stuff in here, but also there's quite a lot of not important stuff in here. The contract itself is about 5,000 words. And in contract terms, that's a pretty small, simple contract. Size 12, Calibri, roughly what contracts normally are at. It's only a 10-page contract. And let's be honest as well, there are two-thirds, three-quarters, if not more of this agreement that are just general contract drivel that you see in every single contract because lawyers how else are they going to make their money but there are some things in this contract that really do matter funnily enough there's a more scary clause in this contract that people don't seem to be really mentioning and talking about i wanted to draw people's attention to this but also interpret that as well just to put things into perspective most business contracts are 20 to 50 pages long i've dealt with contracts that are government contracts that are like two three hundred pages in in scope and therefore this agreement is actually quite straightforward even if you include the Twitch Terms of Service, which obviously augment this agreement. So this document here is the Twitch Terms of Service. Again, I'll link this in the description below. And Harris Heller says, and I quote, Twitch owns your likeness as a brand. If you do a search for brand within here, that there's nothing at all about brands anyway. These are just uh, Twitch's brand guidelines, which are completely irrelevant. If you then do a search for likeness, there's nothing in here about likeness as well. There is literally nothing in the Twitch affiliate agreement about Twitch owning your likeness. Nothing. Zero. Literally nothing. It's factually incorrect. What Twitch does have in the Twitch affiliate agreement is live content exclusivity. So essentially a 24 hour period where they have exclusivity over your content, after which it's a non-exclusive license that's granted. This is called the initial broadcast. So first I wanted to just talk a little bit about the terms of service briefly. If you're a user of Twitch in any form, whether you're a partner, whether you're an affiliate, whether you log on and start chatting on someone's stream, you are governed by this specific set of terms and conditions. This is not specific to affiliates or partners for that matter. We're talking about user content here. Twitch allows you to distribute streaming live and pre-recorded audio visuals and they list a load of different methods that you can basically communicate, including posting as a chatter. This Twitch agreement basically talks about the nature of that and also the likeness and there's some stuff about branding within this. Why is this important to the video? Well, within Harris's video and within Devin's video, they're specifically framed in the way to affiliates which represent hundreds of thousands of viewers of those videos and hundreds of thousands of active broadcasters on Twitch. It's framed in a way that says you shouldn't sign this agreement because this stuff is in that agreement. Well, it's actually not. You've already signed the agreement by using Twitch. Even if you first post and never even broadcast, you've signed that agreement. And let me prove it. Within section one introduction, your agreement to these terms of service, it says the terms of services apply whether you are a user that registers an account or an unregistered user. In other words, they apply even if you've not set up an account on Twitch, but you're watching Twitch. This is anyone, partners, affiliates, viewers. You acknowledge that you have read, understood, and agreed and bound by these services. If you do not agree to these terms of service, do not access or otherwise use Twitch services. So believe it or not, you're already in pretty deep before you even access this, but this is all pretty damn normal for most online services that you see out there. Virtually every single online service has an agreement like this, and this is completely normal. Let's get on to likeness, and we're still on the terms of service here. We are not in the affiliate agreement. So it says here, Twitch and its sub-licenses are allowed to use them to the extent indicated in these terms of services. They specifically reference promoting and redistributing part of the Twitch services. So Harris Hell is right in that the way that these are likely to be used, the way that your content is most likely to be used by Twitch is that they're going to be promoting Twitch. And there's a very low, low, almost insignificant chance that they would use it for anything other than that. This is what's known in contract world as a brand consent, brand clause. Brand clauses exist in probably a third or maybe half of all commercial contracts. They're normally there as a practical thing so that companies can basically advertise their services by referencing their clients. And there are some businesses uh, or maybe some government organizations that don't allow the brand clauses in there because their use of a certain service might be critical or commercially sensitive or confidential. And for those reasons, sometimes these clauses are either not in there or it specifically declines the use of their brand. But in the majority of cases, there's usually an acceptance that a brand can be used in a reasonable way way. And that's essentially what this is. It's within a reasonable way. But the point of this is, and the reason why Harris Heller and Devin Nash are both wrong, is this is nothing to do with the Twitch affiliate or partner program. It's nothing to do with that. The moment you start using Twitch, that's it. You've agreed to this already. So whether or not you sign the affiliate agreement, you're already agreeing to your likeness being used for promotional purposes. And that goes for whether or not you're broadcasting or maybe you're posting some chat as a viewer that can then be used by Twitch. The point is you're bound by that agreement 
agreement and practically it means that Twitch doesn't have to go out and seek your permission just because you feature in a video because you've chatted something or because you've broadcast something and they've reused that. One thing's really, really important to note here. Twitch does not own your likeness as a brand. That's exactly what Harris said. It's incorrect. It's factually incorrect. They don't own it. What this is, is a license to Twitch to use your likeness. And they're actually quite heavily limiting the way in which it's used. So use, reproduce, modify, adapt, publish, translate, create derivative works from, distribute, perform, and display user content for derivative works. That's it. It's not that scary. And you've already signed this agreement. This isn't about you reading a Twitch affiliate agreement, you know, as Devin Nash says, reading it and saying, oh my God, there's some scary clauses in here. I'm not going to sign this. This is a normal clause that is in maybe a third or a half of all business contracts in the whole world. Those guys are just wrong about that, okay? If this was true, most contracts in the world wouldn't be signed. Most, most business contracts just simply wouldn't be signed if people didn't sign contracts on that basis. The drawback is here, as an affiliate, and because there's so many hundreds of thousands of affiliates that are signing up here to the affiliate program, they're not going to negotiate with you on this. You either accept it or you don't. It's as simple as that. One quick note here, if you terminate your contract with Twitch by termin terminating your account with Twitch, Twitch here just say that they can still use your content as part of Twitch services and copied store pro portions of the user content, such as making a clip, or if they've used it for promotional purposes or for reasonable time it takes to remove the backup on other systems. What this actually means is Twitch are even saying that if you want to, as long as you give them reasonable amounts of time, they will even remove you from Twitch some of their promotional videos, as long as you allow them time to do that. So it's actually quite a soft contract. Even the very common clause that's in there is written in quite a soft way. And I don't know why it's been interpreted otherwise. Feels like either Chinese whispers or people just haven't read the clauses very well. Not only are these extremely common, but they are soft. One thing that Harris Heller says, and again, I'll quote here, let's talk about brand likeness. What does that mean? Well, really all it means is Twitch is allowed to make videos on Twitter and YouTube or whatever else they're making videos, and they're allowed to use your content freely without having to contact you and pay you. And if you're a large streamer like Ninja or Shroud, those kind of people who would be paid five to six figures to be put in an advertisement, and that would be a really sketchy thing for Twitch to do. First of all, I'm saying anyone that's in that bracket, we're talking about the 0.001%, people like Ninja and Shroud, they would have specific brand clauses within their custom contracts. They wouldn't be signing this agreement. So it's a really bad comparison to make because this agreement is basically irrelevant to Ninja and Shroud. But even if Twitch did include Ninja or Shroud and that was allowed as part of the agreement between those people, it wouldn't really be that sketchy a thing to do. It'd be quite a normal business thing to do uh, to use the brand in that way. Now, that'd be very different if it was used in any old context, in which case, it, if it damaged Ninja's brand, let's not talk about the time that Twitch accidentally broadcasted a certain type of content to Ninja's old channel while he was at Mixer. That would be brand damaging. That would be a sketchy thing to do. So I agree with Harris Heller's sentiment in general that it's a soft call clause and that the real world interpretation of that clause is very different to what people seem to be interpreting it by. But the problem with this is that it's irrelevant to the affiliate agreement. This is applicable to any Twitch user. And therefore, in the context that they frame it, which is should you, yes or no, sign the affiliate agreement, the reality is it's irrelevant. If you don't sign the agreement, you're still agreeing to that likeness clause that we've talked about. There is one clause that I did briefly want to talk about here because there is one that's quite scary and I've not seen this clause very often in a business contract. In fact, I'm not sure if I've ever seen it. However, I think this is still fairly typical of high volume usage platforms like Twitch, like YouTube, like Facebook and things like that. I think it's quite a common clause in that environment. However, what I will say here is this is actually located within the affiliate agreement, which is why I'm a little bit confused at why that isn't included in the main terms of service where you you have got hundreds of millions of people using Twitch as opposed to the affiliate agreement, which is probably more like only half a million to a million affiliates that are governed by that agreement, a lot fewer a portion of the overall Twitch viewership and volume. There's a section here, section 10 within the affiliate agreement, which is if any modifications is unacceptable to you, which is bad English anyway, if any modifications are unacceptable to you, your only recourse is to terminate this agreement. Your continued participation in the program, this is the affiliate program, following the effect 
effective date of any modification, e.g. the date of posting of changes, notice or revised agreement or the date specified in any email to you regarding such modification. That's really bad contract practice, by the way. That really narrows the scope of how they can enforce this contract. So if you, if you know about contracts, you would know that that shouldn't be in there, really, to be honest. That actually hurts Twitch. Uh, will constitute your binding acceptance of the change. What does this mean? It basically means that the Twitch partnership program can be changed by Twitch at any moment. That's a more scary clause for Twitch to have in their agreement. But again, I still think that's quite a common thing to have in a high volume contract governing hundreds of thousands of entities. And as we said at the start of the video, this was last modified in 2019, nearly two years ago. So the actual reality of this is they're not modifying regularly this agreement and the practical implications of this clause are not that scary. It's probably just something to keep an eye on because let's be honest, nobody's reading this on a day to day basis before you click the go live button on Twitch and start earning next to nothing in advertising revenue. So there you have it. Now you have the facts about the Twitch affiliate contract. It ain't that bad. Actually, it's quite narrow in scope. It's a fairly soft contract. It's relatively typical of the contracts you would see in the business world. If anything, it's not that long. It's fairly narrow. Don't give in to the scaremongering here. I get why people talk about this and it's important and it creates drama. It can create subs and all that kind of stuff, okay? But the reality is here, Twitch is a great platform. They're providing something that's quite innovative that very few other providers out there provide provide. There's only a very limited number of platforms out there that you can broadcast to and even fewer that have any level of critical mass about them. So what Twitch offer is quite unique and of course they're going to govern that and protect themselves wherever possible. That's all pretty normal. Obviously be careful with what you sign. If there's something that you really don't like in there, you do you. It's your life. It's your business. It's your entity. In this case, the benefits far outweigh the drawbacks in terms of signing contracts. And if anyone now comes onto my stream and says, should I sign the contract? I'm not going to tell you to sign it or not. What I'm going to say is a scaremongering that's out there is unfounded. Hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully you found it insightful. Hopefully you've come away from this knowing a little bit more and seeing it, having it spoon fed to you. If you did find it useful, hit the like, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments how you feel about this and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care. Hi, and welcome to Machine Dana's guitar show featuring me, Machine Dana, and the Cornflake guitar.